I'm gonna start this video off by saying I absolutely loved this DLC. Also, there's very obviously a spoiler warning because I can't talk about the bosses without showing them. So if you haven't played the DLC, I suggest you go do that. This tier list will include one version of a boss. If there's multiple bosses with the exact same name, I'll not be like placing them on the tier list, but repetitiveness might affect how they're placed on the tier list. Uh. Hey, did you know today's video is sponsored by the most embarrassing moment of my entire playthrough was dying to this guy like 10 times because I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying because of how fucking lazy this design was. It's literally just like, what if little guy was big guy? Hmm. His stupid ass fucking belly bump attack just makes no sense. I don't know how it damages you. He literally just like thrusts his, his tummer at you and it's fucking weird. This dude feels like the 9-11 of Elden Ring. I definitely know I'll never forget this boss fight. Oh, <coughs> oh shit. Boring, not even hard, just plain fucking boring. It's a big boss that forces you to have the patience of a monk because you can usually only get one hit in after an attack. The problem is that this dipshit's attacks are all boring and easy to dodge. Oh, he's biting you, dodge and hit. Oh, he's pushing his head at you again, dodge and hit. Oh, he's slamming his head down, dodge twice and hit. Even his phase two was just dodge once. It's so fucking boring, man. I saw a lot of people complaining about this guy being bullshit, which makes no sense because this dude's about as unpredictable as a four-year-old playing Connect 4. Maybe it's like his hitbox is too big or he attacks too fast, I don't know. And also, he's fucking huge. You can't see anything during the fight and it's really pissing me off. Fuck you. I just don't care, man. Decently cool knight enemy, and he just has one new move and is given a boss bar. There are many such cases in Elden Ring, and all of them feel lazy. The new move is annoying when you're hit, but easy to dodge, so it doesn't even really change the fight. Absolute L boss. Fuck you, and fuck your stupid summons, and fuck your millions of spells per second. There's another fight where I feel dumb as shit for dying more than once because she has the durability of a used toothpick. This fight feels like fighting a mosquito, and you don't even get fucking malaria at the end of it. As my grandpappy always used to say, what's the point of fighting a mosquito if you don't get malaria at the end of it? Elden Ring. <laughs> fucking see, why did you even write that? Cool as shit the first time you see one, not worth fighting every other time you see them. Basically, they are the mausoleums of this game. At least there's a little variety in the golems. Instead of being boring, some are really fucking annoying. This shit is so pretty, even at 4 FPS. Oh, he's twirling around. <laughs> What's he gonna do? Fire a bunch of fireballs at me? What a fucking idiot. I'm gonna be real. Uh, I didn't even care enough to fight this boss the first time I saw it because there was probably nothing different from the first red bear you fight and I was almost right. I think it has one different attack? I don't even fucking know man. It's just a red rune bear. Like wh what else? You already fight like 40 of these guys in the main game. What the fuck are they doing here? There's no reason to have not one but two tree sentinels in the DLC. But here they are. They're they're here for some fucking reason. I don't. You already fought these guys at the Capitol, and they were chilling there. And they're, for no reason, they're just stuck here. Only reason this isn't F tier is because. Uh, why the fuck can you summon Yolan for this bullshit? It's fucking tree sentinel. You don't need. And she does. She made the fight harder, because she gives him like three times the fucking health. Why? That's the first time I've actually fucking noticed this. Why can you summon your lawn for the first boss you fight in the entire fucking game? Good shit. Oh, all right, there she goes. These dudes really struggle with elevation. It's kind of goofy how often they miss you. The only difference I noticed besides, you know, obviously having more health is that the shield guy's on fucking meth. This dude attacks so fast and combos into shit that really shouldn't combo. It's obviously not difficult, but it's really weird. <laughs> fucking recording camera back again why the fuck does he still take half damage what is the actual point of summoning yolan bro it's a fucking tree sentinel i feel like i'm killing this guy for the first time again with the fucking damage i'm doing and i've got i'm scattered through level fucking 18 why why is he why why all right i fucking suck never mind this is indeed an npc fight what more can be said she's easy predictable, and overall boring. 
Holy shit. Did From Software add an extra zero or something to her fire attack? Because it feels like I'm fighting a crackhead. She has literal crackhead strength. Besides the Hurricane Katrina level of damage that she occasionally throws at you, easy clap. This is also indeed an NPC fight. This time though, you get to watch this dipshit wiggle her sword around at you in what can only be described as fucking pathetic. Why is this higher than the dancer, you may ask? Because it's kind of funny. The Elden Ring equivalent of an elephant on 20 tons of LSD. The coolness of the boss, the arena, the quest before you get to it are all great, but holy shit can this bitch fart be annoying. The fact that she can react so incredibly fast while being the size of a Boeing 737 feels incredibly unfair. Her singularity move might just be the coolest thing From Software has ever made, but I cannot for the life of me figure out how to not get hit by it at least once. She also does this dumbass attack where she summons three little hands. Now they don't do much or have that much health, but man do they find the right way to just piss you off. And also, you're gonna tell me these fuck nuggets get one shot by my weapon, but can survive a fucking supernova? Her stupid spin move can hit you even if you dodge right. Her dumbass fucking stupid ass fucking annoying ass finger chainsaw move, as I like to call it, is even more annoying because you can just randomly pull it out, and if you're close to her, you know, like trying to deal any damage at all on melee, you'll get fucking mauled! I hate this bitch. No, this is my least favorite fight in the entire DLC. The only reason this fight isn't in the lowest position is because it's cool looking. That is literally it. <sighs> Just a rune bear, but again, the prequel. The only reason this one is higher is because it was first in the DLC and the wind attacks were high. There is really nothing else to be said. Another basic enemy with a new weapon. At least the twin blades are kind of interesting to go against. His wing attack is cool, but bro really think he Crucible Knight Solyria. Bro really think he Crucible Knight Everdrail Limgrave. Bro really think he Crucible Knight Crumbling Faramazula. Bro really think he Crucible Knight Ordovis. Bro really think he Crucible Knight Prince Ordovis. Bro really think he... Why are you even in the DLC? Why are you even in the DLC? Except I actually kind of like the demi-human squad that comes before and around her. It's a shame that I don't really enjoy fighting demi-human queens. She would probably be an F tier if she didn't have her goons surrounding her. Good end to a quest, but really not that impressive of a boss. Ymir really doesn't do much to differentiate herself from other NPC fights, and it's kind of a weird choice to give her lesser versions of moves from a boss that you just fought to get to her. I like the little child hand coming into the fight. It's a great way to end the quest line. When I heard to watch out for the child the first time I talked to Ymir, I was always on the lookout every time I came back for like a giant fucking scorpion to come out of the ground or something. That beginning legacy dungeon literally traumatized me. Yep, that's an ancient dragon all right, not as cool as the other ones. I enjoy the other ancient dragon fights quite a bit because, you know, they have cool, like, lightning glaives and shit. This dude just kind of like, kind of just like Mike Tyson, he just kind of punches you. And also, why does he use lightning attacks so often? We are in an arena filled with water. Hidetaka Miyazaki will begin to start coughing in 17 years. Interesting gimmick, not so interesting boss. If you don't kill his clones, then they'll build up an effect that if reaches max, instantly kills you. This, this, this is so easy. This dude does two fucking damage. He hits about as hard as a roll of wet fucking toilet paper, man. And if you use the sacred relic sword, you can just clean up everything and make this guy a fucking punching bag. Another day, another NPC fight. But this one has an actually interesting weapon. Also, what's with the red bears in this DLC? For a second, I thought Miyazaki lost his foot fetish. <laughs> Fuck. This one is quite a decent NPC fight. I like the dragon incantations you can use because they spice up the combat and the weapon you get from him is fucking sick as hell. And when he uses that weapon with the like the weapon arts and shit, it is dope, man. It feels like you're actually fighting a functioning being. It almost feels like a PvP fight, which is as good as it fucking gets for NPC fights, so. Curse Blade Labyrinth. Curse, Curse Blade Labyrinth. Dumbass fucking name, but kind of cool fight. 
These motherfuckers are a pain in the ass to fight, but the darkness actually adds an interesting complexity to them. You gotta listen for sound cues on when to dodge. Now, I know I just said how annoying they can be. I wish they gave this one a little bit more health. In both runs, it got annihilated before it could do any real damage. It genuinely feels like Curse Blade Curb? Curse? Curbs? Curse Blade Labyrinth has less health than the nameless ones that litter the gravesite plane. Man, this fight is so easy. This dude deals like four damage per hit and has the brain power of a hamster. There's not even any spells he can cast. <clears throat> That's better. Good enough introduction to NPC fights in this DLC. I guess. Overall, I prefer them here than in the base game, despite how many there are. Also, how did anybody die to his crossbow after the first time? He loads it about as quickly as a hungover dad gets up to take his kids to school. It wouldn't be a bigger tell that he was about to fire if he held up a giant stoplight and it turned green when he was starting to shoot. This is a gank boss fight. So you're probably wondering why it's not 39th on the list, but if you do your quest right, it can be not as hard of a gank fight, and it's actually a good way to end the story. I actually enjoyed what they did with this gaggle of goobers, and I think it's interesting that you can split them into two parties. Now, I don't know this for sure, but I'm assuming you can get more than just Ansbach and Thialyr on your side. And also, FUCK Letta! All my homies HATE Letta! If the only fight with these goobers was the duo fight, then it'd probably be A tier. Fighting them singularly is just okay, but watching two dragons beat the shit out of each other is cool as hell. This DLC made me somewhat like base dragon fights again. Probably because there wasn't 7,000 of them this time. Most other dragons, if you sit behind them, they'll just kind of flail around and not even attempt to, like, attack you. They'll just... It's like watching a, a fish out of water. With this ghost slam dragon, he'll, he might foot stomp you. He might fly up and get away, but not too far to where it's annoying. Like, it's, it, it's a very active fight, which is good. And it also adds a couple of new moves that I actually like a lot. Even though I don't like gank fights, the second dragon in Cerulean Coast is much better. The third fight is also really good. I've literally never felt more companionship with my enemies than this. No right to be in the DLC, but also I really like fighting Deathrite birds, so I guess it's good. Uh, not much else to say here. Thanks to today's sponsor. Getting my ass beat by a two foot tall gremlin was not on the agenda today. But here we are. If this dude had double the health, he'd probably be like five spots higher. His moveset's very fun to counteract and dodge, and I really think he generally should have had like triple the health. Like if this dude had five times the health, I wouldn't even flinch. I would say, thank you, Mr. Zaki, but please give him more because I really like fighting this little man. And then Miyazaki would say, how did you get into my house? Holy shit, Margaret, get the shotgun. Besides his initial ass rail of an attack, this dude was alright to fight. His large hog was a little scary at first, but if you polish your hammer enough, you can turn that big pig into tiny twig. And no, it's not a penis joke. I've seen a lot of people complain about this guy, but like, it really only seems like there's one move that's unbalanced. Every other move besides his charge is fine. He only gets knocked down to B due to the randomness of getting hit by a charge attack. Sometimes you dodge it perfectly and get hit. Other times you dodge when his spear is already halfway up your ass and you don't. The charge attack can also double hit sometimes. Like, I, I, no other boss I can think of can do this. And he also has another move where he can double hit. Besides that one, I like the pig spin attack. Because how the fuck is that boar surviving that, man? His inside should look like an all-you-can-eat barbecue buffet after that. It's crazy that one attack can bring down a pretty great fight. Both Death Knight fights are great, but I think I prefer the one with the double axes. The grab attack is really scary because if he sucks you, he gets a cum load of HP back. And no, that's not a pain. His moveset is fire. Just kidding, it's lighting. <laughs> I like how he rarely does lightning attacks, but when he does, they hurt quite a bit and are actually pretty fucking scary. I just wish he hit the gym a little harder, man, because he gets his ass pounded by anything larger than a kitchen knife. No poise on this, man. It's kind of sad the only Godwin related thing we have in the DLC was were these guys, but that's alright, I guess. Hot take, the Skadu, Skado, Skadis, Skade, Skadish, 
how do you say it? The big S tree avatar should have had four phases because it was a gimmick boss done right. Having three phases could have been slightly irritating, but it dies in literally like three hits. It has as much health as a real fucking sunflower. His first phase is the worst in my opinion because that's when he does the projectile spam the most and that shit can get kind of annoying. But every other move is pretty cool. I like when he launches himself across the fucking arena at Mach 3. The fat man attack he has could be annoying, but he gives you 17 years to hit him afterwards, so it's mostly just a free win whenever he does it. Decently easy, but that doesn't detract from our interesting boss design and fighting style. And also, thank fucking god they didn't have a giant scorpion boss fight. I literally would have never beat this DLC. I'm arachnophobic, but scorpions haven't triggered it in real life until this fucking DLC, man. That stupid hole in the beginning made me want to burn down my local bank on and Anyways, she's cool. I like the pink color scheme and she has a fun to dodge moveset. I wish her phase 2 gave her a little more something because she really just doesn't change besides like two new moves. She's just as aggressive as every other boss in the DLC, but because she sits on what's basically a giraffe, she has a really hard time hitting you, which is probably why she's a lot easier than most Remembrance bosses. Now, I really like the fact that she is a mount because it's perhaps similar to us, and that means we have something in common. Now, hear me out for a sec. Sir, a second Midra has hit the towers. Four words. Cool ass dude. Really. Enjoy how wacky he is when trying to hit you. Like this dude just ripped his skull off, of course he's gonna be a fucking weirdo. His second phase is much better than his first because a lot of time you can outpace him, in the second you can't anywhere near as much because he throws frenzy flame everywhere. He forces you to get in his face and that's fun. His phase transition is also one of my favorites in the whole From Software game history because he just fucking face plants and creates a nuclear blast. Surely nothing like that would ever happen with a certain 51st president of America, right? You know that one kid who always ate crayons, pretended he was a wolf, and got expelled for shitting himself? This dude is basically that kid of this DLC in a good way. <laughs> he fights so incredibly weird and has such odd timings that it's really hard to grasp, but it's very nice to have a differently paced fight every once in a while. I basically got turned into his bitch the first time I fought him and had to memorize how to specifically dodge all of his moves. Also, I fought this guy way too fucking early on my first run. So that's probably why I got my ass kicked so hard. I really enjoyed the spinny move he has where he jumps off his horse to whoop your ass. Stallion joining him to kick your fucking teeth in. From a design perspective, I think it's actually very interesting. Very few other bosses have another like thing to look out for when dodging him. So you gotta dodge his like wheel 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 and then the horse goes blah, blah, blah. You gotta watch out for, th for that. And his phase two transition has to be the most unique in the whole game. His goo horse with no hind legs rises up in the air gaining more goo as it goes but also losing some of that goo in blue fire while shooting it at you and then it chooses not to get its hind legs back with said goo to be faster. I don't fucking know, man. Look, I, I know. I know. I know. Very hot take. But I really fucking like this boss. The first phase is actually great, and I had a lot of fun fighting it and learning how to dodge it. And to learn that Mikola was a real prickola, really ticklas my fans. Alright, I'll stop. The second phase is an absolute bitch and a half. And the only time I have sort of agreed with the complaints of the DLC being too hard. I would just get rid of the after images, because that shit is so confusing to me. I'm, I, it's like waving keys and lights in front of my fucking face. I do not know what's happening, but I'm, I'm just looking at it. This is 100% From Software's hardest fight. And harder than Ishin is fucking crazy. Especially considering the bullshit you can pull off in Elden Ring. If I was in a saw trap and had to beat Radon twice in a row within 8 hours, I'm killing myself before Jigsaw even says what the punishment is for failing. I was physically shaking after beating him. I thought I developed Parkinson's. Goaded fight. Seriously great and I only really enjoyed it after I beat it. There, there, of course during the fight I was like fuming and I, I, I was gonna rip my keyboard in half and kill my dog and crash a plane into the world train but 
after it all, I realized it's not as bullshit as I thought it was. Go to fight, even if there is a little bullshit. First boss to truly beat my meat in, in the DLC. She seems to have been hit the hardest by the Scatatree Fragment buff patch as she was literally tickling me the second time I fought her. Super fun on repeat and it actually feels like a dance with how you have to dodge her moves. Dodging is more based on rhythm rather than direction in this fight. Her big sword with her like half phase transition and the swipe are also really cool. Like just everything about this boss is really fucking cool. It's kind of crazy the leap in difficulty between her phase one and phase two and they rarely do that but I really enjoy that a lot. Her double moon attack is also really dope. I don't even know why she does all that. Like, it's not that serious, but it's, I mean, it's cool as fuck. And she really feels like a perfect boss. I don't have any nit nitpicks. I knew it said, Jesus. I know, I know some of you might be, I know, I know some of you, don't, don't dislike yet, please. I have my reasons. I'm biased. <laughs> I like this fight a lot. How are people complaining so hard about this one? Radon I get. He's really hard, like seriously. Gaius, I kind of get, his first attack is really hard to dodge, but this dude? Really? He's more aggressive than a chihuahua that got into a mound of cocaine, sure, but the chihuahua overdoses occasionally. Meaning, he also gives you downtime to either hit or heal after attacking. I don't know why people are saying he has no openings to do stuff, because his openings are, you know, after he attacks and is done attacking, I think the element changing is cool as shit though because it alters all of his moves. It doesn't just give him a new one. Electricity makes lightning strikes that are created after every attack. Frost makes his attacks have to be dodged more precisely and wind makes him even more aggressive. And when he mixes these together and his like last third of the health bar, it's cool as fuck, man. Any divine beast dancing lion hater is welcome to cleaning their toilet with bleach and then pissing in it. My poor boy. I thought it, this dude was gonna be a mega asshole based on the trailer, but it turns out he was pretty chill. This fight is fantastic, and will stand up with the all-time great fights in From Software's catalog. His first phase and second phase are genuinely really well balanced. I know I said I enjoy this DLC, but every boss is super duper, quad scooper, bull duper, blooper, duper aggressive. There's usually very little downtime. There is downtime, but there's usually very little. This dude genuinely like feels like a Dark Souls boss at his pacing, which is good for the DLC, I think. And you think, oh wait, this dude shoots a bajillion snakes in one of his attacks, how is that fair? When he's in snake form, you can hit him for even more damage. It makes his second phase go much faster than his first, but he's also more dangerous. I genuinely don't even know what else to say besides this is literally a perfect fight. One, two, three. CURSE YOU BEAR! Never would I have ever thought that From Software would top Dark Eater Madeir for Dragon Bosses, but here we are, man. His first phase is good. His second phase is the best boss in all of Elden Ring. This mean bitch is probably top three From Software bosses for me. Amazing NPC. Amazing build-up. Amazing lore, amazing music, amazing fight. Just- oh, Sorry. Shit myself. If Mesmer is perfect, then Bale is perfection. Egon makes this already perfect fight 10 times better. It's hype as shit. Bale goes all over the arena during the fight, but it never feels like he's running away from you. He really just wants to beat the absolute shit out of you and is doing it in an interesting manner. Most dragon fights have the problem of standing still too long or having awkward pacing and fight and like visuals this dude just does not have it it's just an amazing fight just like fucking midir man his phase transition with the nuke and wings made me climax mid fight in public at a playground the new attacks he gets with the earthquake effects are weirdly well balanced considering everything else because they're so delayed to where you have you have time to react and also dodge Bale's next move. His actual design is crazy too, with heads of Placidusax lashed onto him, a missing leg and fucked up wings. The literal only thing I would change is make him more Mammoth Floss and give us his hand. In my hunt, in my hunt, in my heart, this dude once against Placid Dorksax and pounded that Placid Pussy 